Jack, summer tour. We told everyone we was going to make an announcement. Mm -hmm. You want to let them know where we're going? I'll let you tell them. Oh, well, June 3rd, we'll be in Detroit. June 4th, we'll be in Chicago. Pre-sale tickets are available now using code SMOKE. Code SMOKE. Got that part? Got that part. Tickets go on sale tomorrow, noon Eastern, for the public. Make sure you grab them. Hurry up. Don't be late. Don't be outside be watching fun, the show man. from outside. Have... Yeah, because we're going to be turned up. These are our first two stops. Yeah. We have some more stops coming, but appreciate everyone who told us where to come. Chicago and Detroit, y'all showed out the most, so we're going to show up to your city first. Man, y'all been asking for the tour. Here it is. Let's make it happen. Turn up. June 3rd, we'll be in Detroit. June 4th, Chicago. Get the tickets. Me and Matt, all the smoke. You never know who else going to pop up. You know somebody's going to pop up. You better be there. This episode of All the Smoke is brought to you by DraftKings. It's that time of the year. The NBA postseason is here. Are you going with the favorites, the dark horses, or the underdogs? Anything can happen. The battles are hot, the stakes are high, and the cash prizes are huge. Get off the bench and get into the game with DraftKings Sportsbook. Here's the deal. Right now, all new customers who bet just $5 on anything, that's right, anything, will get $150 in bonus bets instantly. So what are you waiting for? Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Sign up using the promo code SMOKE. Keep the good vibes rolling and use your $150 in bonus bets on DraftKings Same Game Parlay for a shot at even bigger payouts. Again, new customers can bet just $5 on anything and receive $150 in bonus bets instantly with code SMOKE. The crown is yours. This episode of All the Smoke is brought to you by Coors Light. Between work, social media, and the choices life throws our way, it's no wonder we're more worked up. It's true. Life throws curveballs, and we battle adversity every day. But we pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and make the best of things. And Coors Light is here to celebrate those who rise above and choose a chill mindset. That's right. We choose to chill. Tough loss in the blacktop? Why not settle the scores with the ice-cold peace offering? I like when you found a possum in your kitchen. Sure, it's surprising. But you rose up. You found a way to get that home invader out, didn't you? That's right. Then I made the choice to choose chill. I reached for Coors Light because it's a mountain cold refreshment. That day wasn't ruined. It had only just begun. When you choose to rise above it all, choose chill. Choose Coors Light. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com smoke. That's CoorsLight.com smoke. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Welcome back, All the Smoke LA. Jack, man, when I found out we got these two, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I pinched myself. And they came bearing gifts, too. I and mean, we and, got and they're cold, so no, that means I have to try one. We got some edibles. We got ashtrays. We got grinders. Uh, man, welcome to the show, Legendary, Cheech and Chong, man. Thank, Thank you, you very much. It's nice Thanks for having me. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys thank you. for being here. Um, we're going to get into your just the, 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 the ground setting and, and trend setting things you guys did in your past. But uh, how's current life? What's going on with you guys today? Uh, today, first I woke up and then here I am. Uh, uh, we're doing a bunch of things, man. We got this, this business going that's, that's kicking ass, you know, and we just we've got it all over the country now. Really? Yeah. Yeah, we were doing what you were talking about, revitalizing other uh, 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 pot shops uh -huh. and um, rebranding them. So that's going good. And what else? We, we just did. Uh, we're both married to real strong women, so we don't do a whole lot of anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> we, just, we just say, how does this look? Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's the power of a strong mind, you know, to get women and strong women. <laughs> See? That's a perk, you know. Yeah. Uh, still touring, though, right? No. No, no, we know we we finally. When I went into the the, the monitors at one show, <laughs> cut the shit out of myself and messed up my knee. That's about it. That's, I said, and and he it? didn't want to do the wheelchair thing. And we told, him, "Are you kidding? At the airport, man, do the wheelchair thing, because then they put you on first, right, you and, yeah, and yeah. anybody with you." Yeah, yeah. You get so on first. we had to, we had to yeah, convince him to, you know, oh, you, know, you know, the strippers do it everywhere now. Oh, the strippers if, do. Yeah, if you go to the airport, the strippers and figured it out. They act like they hurt and they get on the plane first. If you know, it's really, <laughs> see, it's, that's the why the strippers, they're strippers are taking over man. with that one. Yeah, yeah, they doing that a lot now. Especially in Miami, strippers are smart. I ran, I ran into this guy the other day. My wife is Russian, born and raised in St. Petersburg, Russian, Russians. All these Russians are so beautiful and, and educated. And, and, you know, the, my, my wife just got her doctorate from SE in music. And, and blah, 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 blah. He says, yeah, all the, strip, all the Russians I know are strippers. <laughs> so, there's the other side, you know. Well, they're smart. Yeah, they're smart. Yeah. Speaking of strippers, 
<laughs> you guys remember Le Lawanda Page? Yeah. Uh, Aunt Esther on... Uh, uh, Red Fox. Red oh, Fox. Yes, yes, yes. Remember Aunt Esther? Esther? Yes. Uh -huh. Google her. Google her. Don't tell me she used to drop she used to be. High. She used to be a top stripper. Yeah. Exotic yes. dancer. Oh, oh, wow. I worked with her in, in Canada in, in the 50s. Yeah. And she had an act where she had a, a live bow, a snake. A yeah, snake, yeah. And and the trouble is, the snake died, but she kept using it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to gotta Google her, Lawanda Page. She wow. was this funny, oh tall, gorgeous, beautiful woman, but she had a sense of humor that was killer back she then. She was funny, yeah. I knew her. I knew her there. Yeah, she kept that snake. <laughs> <laughs> what was that's the other right one, Norma? That's Norma, her. That's Norma her. Miller. Miller. Miller, Norma Miller, who was with Red Fox too. And she was a dancer in the in the Well the, the Jive, days. you know, the uh, yeah. Bebop. Yeah. The old Bebop when the, right at the end of the war, you know, and and, and jazz and be and dancing was the thing to do. Yeah. Well, Norma Miller was Norma one Miller. of those. I saw a documentary when she was her dancing in the yeah. day, man. She was it. Yeah. And, and so she mean, ended she up was it. being a, a MC at Red Fox's Club. Comedy Club. Yeah. And so the first time that Cheech and I were ever on stage ever in a comedy setting was at Red Fox's Red Club. Fox. And so uh, Norma says, oh, what's your name? And so we told her, you know, Cheech and Chong. And so when it's time to announce her, she goes, and ladies and gentlemen, here they are. Give it up for her. Geek and gank. <laughs> I said, who do you want to be tonight, geek or gank, man? <laughs> I'll be the other guy. Geek or gank. And Lenny Bruce's whole entourage was there. Lenny had just died a couple of months earlier. <laughs> and, uh, and his own. His entourage used yeah. to follow Lenny everywhere. They had yeah. nowhere to follow. No, nobody to follow. And so they, uh, they were at the comedy club, and when we were there, and Tony Vascara, uh, Lenny Bruce's uh, mother, ex, no, Lenny Bruce's uh, father-in-law. Father-in-law. <laughs> he was a young Chicano that married Lenny's mother, Sally Mar. I think he Sally Lyde said she was, she was like. 40 and she was like 60 yeah. <laughs> and, and and tony lied said he was 30 when he was like 18 and they got married and they went on a year honeymoon and that at the end of the year you know they decided you know the age thing and everything but they remained really good friends and so tony was lenny bruce's uh road manager and he was the one that bought lenny the the heroin that that took him out yeah, and so after we got to know Tony, Tony saw us right away. He 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 adopted us, and he 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 became our manager. Although we had to support him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the way it works with managers, man. And I asked, I asked Tony. I said, you know, because he was the one that gave Lenny the the the, the mm -hmm. start. And so I said to Tony, I said, "What's the big deal with heroin? What is it? It's taken out so many people." And Tony didn't say a word. He reached in his pocket and pulled out a packet of heroin and gave it to me. What? And so I took it, put it in my pocket, as I always do. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I hid it in my sock drawer. And then about a month later, I took it out and flushed it down the toilet. Very good. Good I move. said... I, I, this took out yeah. too many, well, too yeah. many people yeah. and, and yeah. it's going to crush me. Yeah. I know that if I did anything, I just yeah. flushed it down the toilet. Good move, good move. Great move. Tell us about Up and Jokes debuts soon. Well, one of the things that we noticed, was we, we opened some uh, dispensaries in uh, Boston. Uh -huh. And uh, when we were there, I looked around, oh, man, this would make a great comedy club. Because the thing about comedy clubs, you just need a place that's warm with a little stage and a mic. <laughs> Not even a stage, you just need a microphone. And so uh, we're going to start doing comedy and up in jokes, and we're going to get all the new uh, Cheech and Chong type, uh, or anybody, you know, that wants to go on stage. And, uh, and then we're going to introduce the world to uh, some and then charge them 10 percent <laughs> oh, we're, we're gonna be the managers now <laughs> more than that flip the game gotta make sense it's the know, business now we learned yeah so up in jokes is gonna be uh you know it would be like what dispensaries should be whether mm. they're they are or not see I was, I was never really even though we had a a cannabis cafe in one of our movies. Uh, uh, what was it? Still smoking. Still smoking. Mm -hmm. yeah, we had we built a cannabis cafe in Amsterdam, and uh, 
And when we, you know, we finished the movie, the guy kept the cafe. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, he Bogar. kept it, he kept it going. What's the name of it? Uh, it, was, it was Bogar's yacht. Now that was that the guy, the the, the, the artist Bogar. Yeah, that made the backwards watches. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it was, was the guy. A, but the, I, I don't know that. It, what, what did we call it? Do you remember? I don't pot, know. Pot cafe. I don't know, something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it had a name on it. I can't remember. What it was. <laughs> yeah, pot cafe, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. But times have changed, and now Amsterdam's bulldogs. It, it, it's almost uh, illegal there. You really? Yeah, it flipped around. Really? I just got. I just came from there, and I stayed at the dispensary, uh, the restaurant, cafe, the whole day, and smoked all day, every day. It's like, yeah, days. isn't that nice? I love Amsterdam. That's nice. Uh, Amsterdam really? was great. Yeah. yeah. Well, we shot a movie there. You know, they heard I, I, I directed it. You know, and they heard, oh man, Chong's coming. You know, so all the. Big potheads in in Amsterdam. They got together, you know. And we're going to take Chong out for a night. <laughs> <laughs> I nice made it. Out. I made it for about a half hour. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> they literally had to carry me. <laughs> Yeah, to my room and put me on the bed. I saw two people. Pass and the out. next morning, they still haven't been to bed. They're still at parties. Uh, movie. Man, those Russian, those uh, uh, Dutch guys, man, they go hard. Oh, I was in a cafe out there one time smoking, and I saw two people kind of just lose consciousness, and they carried them outside, lifted them upside down, and poured like water on their neck and on their head, and they came back to life. Oh, really? Like, this must be the, that must be the tradition. Like it was the a Dutch Dutch treat, treat, man. Yeah, man. They poured them. I don't want to be that high. Hold them upside down and poured water here and on their face, yeah. and they started coming back to life like some fish. I was like, what the fuck is going on here, bro? I'm good, right? Oh, well, uh, Amsterdam was crazy back then. I couldn't imagine that. They had squatters. Has it always been, not to cut you off, has it always been legal out there, I'm guessing? Yeah, it comes and goes. Yeah, okay. yes. yeah. Depends yeah. on, you know, yeah. uh-huh. who you got in power. Right now, they got sort of, they're leaning toward the right wing kind of oh, okay. thing. So, yeah. see, Amsterdam was always what everybody else was doing. They would do the opposite. Okay. You know, that's that's... That's really their thing. Their nature. Interesting. Uh, you guys announced also that you guys ha- have a biopic. Yeah. yeah. Drop it. Can you tell us a little bit about that? No. Finally. No. No. We, oh, was my supposed to say yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah the biopic. Uh, See, a biopic, a he pit. doesn't have to be in it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, dead, what, I'm dead already in what, this biopic. <laughs> if he's in my, it. My kids take over. <laughs> If he's in it, or if he's going to be in it, he'll scroll down to his part, <laughs> learn it. <laughs> bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. My line, okay. <laughs> That's funny. So, uh, when did that be drop in? And I, I don't know. March. 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 Oh, coming up. We're soon. Going no, we're going to be doing it in March. No. But oh, the, that. Oh, the. Oh, the bio. That, that. The, the, it's not a biopic. It's actually a documentary. It's a docu- oh, documentary. documentary. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's more of a documentary, but after the. Do- it's a. It's called uh, Cheech and Chong's Last Movie. Okay. And so it's going to be, uh, it's a, it's a docu, it started out to be a documentary, mm-hmm. but the guy, Dave, that does it, he's, he's done a lot of good movies, like mm-hmm. Sling Blade and, oh, okay. and a few of those. And so yeah, he him, watched and his, it. him and his editors, they took he it and they, they made it a real movie. Okay. And they got, they got us in there fighting. And, oh, really? And so the people that have seen it have uh, really like reacted to it. You know? This episode of All The Smoke is brought to you by the SoFi NBA Play-In Tournament. Six months, 82 games, and finally, the postseason is here. First up, the SoFi NBA Play-In Tournament. For this, the rules are simple. Win and get in. Eight teams battle to earn their playoff spot in a winner-go-home style tournament. This tournament is bound to be full of highlights, excitement, and drama. There's no better way to set the tone for the playoffs than this. So make sure you don't miss the action. Watch TNT's coverage of SoFi NBA Play-In Tournament on April 16th and 19th on TNT, True TV, and Max. This episode of All the Smoke is sponsored by the Game Time app. The thrill and excitement of playoff basketball and the concert season is upon us. If you're looking to get in on the action in person, Game Time has you covered. Keep track of the playoff schedules and the concerts with the Game Time app to secure your tickets. This week is 420, our favorite holiday. And good friend of the show in LA Zone, Ice Cube, is performing at the Forum with the legendary lineup. E-40, Too Short, Scarface, Exhibit, and Mac 10 a packed out show I wouldn't want to miss. When I looked at the tickets last week, they are starting just under $100 on the Game Time app. And if I find the same tickets for less somewhere else, Game Time will credit me with 110% of the difference. So if you're like me looking for tickets at the last minute, here's a pro tip. 
you get up to 60% off with the Game Time app. Take all the guesswork out of buying tickets with the Game Time app. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code SMOKE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms may apply. Again, create an account and redeem code SMOKE for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. Cheech, you grew up a straight A student, a son of a police officer. Yeah. Charles, you grew up a, a biracial in Calgary. Can y'all speak on y'all upbringings? Tell us a little about how y'all grew up. Yeah, in Calgary. Yeah, yeah, Calgary. I was. I wasn't born in Calgary. <laughs> I, I, I actually, but I went to Calgary when yeah. I went to Canada. Yeah. I got deported out of Calgary. Yeah. <laughs> they said, I did. I literally. We had a band. We had the first soul band in Western Canada. The shades. And we got so popular. Was it well, the first shades? Of all, I, I, I got was it a, the shades? Huh? The shades that band? The shades. The sh yeah. Everybody was a different color. In the band. <laughs> that's why they call the shades. Shades. That's what nice. we call ourselves the shades. That's right. dope. That's, that's dope. dope. But we were all athletes. Yeah. Like uh, we had a sax player that could have been a pro pro football player, you know, uh, tight end. And the run, the singer was a star running back that they were grooming him for the pros, Tommy Milton. This guy's thing was that you kicked the ball to him, he'd run it back for a touchdown for the junior. And, and so so he became the singer, and my brother was a linebacker at the time, and so my brother became the bass player because we needed a car. <laughs> he couldn't play bass, but he, he was really a car. Yeah. <laughs> so we had a lot. Of, and the piano player, Bernie, he was like a... Uh, he played football too, but he was more of a bodybuilder, you know, yeah. Mr. Everything. Yeah. And, uh, and so we had a tough ass band, yeah. but we uh, were so popular. Oh, and, and I don't know how, I, everything w that happened to me is very serendipity. For some reason, I, st oh, I know what happened. <laughs> it was a serendipity. I got caught with a friend, a friend of mine stole the car and it stalled near my house so he called me up he said i got a car but it's not running and so i went down to help him get the car started and of course the cops caught us and uh, we, i ran home we ran home and they followed the footprints <laughs> in the <laughs> snow <laughs> Gotcha. So I went to Canada jail. Canada raises geniuses. <laughs> I, 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 raises geniuses. <laughs> I went to jail for the first time that night. Both of us did. Yeah. And it was funny, too, because we both jumped into bed, you know, with our clothes on. And, and the cop came to the door, and my mom says, oh, they've been here all night. <laughs> and the cop said, excuse me, ma'am, walk by, walk, follow the snow <laughs> into uh, our bed. The tracks were in the house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Took us to jail. Well, when I got, we got... In the end, it was like it was called joyriding, a hundred dollar fine. But I, I, my social kind of mind said, well, the reason people get in trouble in Calgary, there was nothing for teenagers to do, yeah. and so I, I we went to the magistrate. Center. The magistrate that sentenced me, you know, I went and I had a talk with him. You know, just knocked on his uh, door in one day and. And I went in and talked to him, and I told him there's nothing for kids to do. And he, he looked at me, he says, weren't you just in front of me? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes. And he says, the kids need something to do. He says, well, go find something to do. <laughs> he says, go do it. Right. It's your idea. And so I started a teen club, the Shades Teen Club. It was a stroke of genius because we got everything donated. <laughs> we got a <laughs> hall donated in the and right downtown, the Legion Hall, the best hall you could get. And so our band, that's where we started playing. And so our band was R, first R and B, first time they heard Chuck Berry or mm. Bo Diddley or anything in Calgary. And we packed we've had people coming from everywhere in Alberta packing the place. The trouble is they shut us down at midnight. At midnight you got all these rock and roll people with nothing to do. Trouble. in Calgary, so they went and just terrorized the city. And so the cops called us in into the office uh, a, two weeks before Christmas, 1958, and they said, uh, <laughs> you guys got to get the hell out of town. <laughs> really? Yeah. For good? For how long? Like Forever. Really? And so so, <laughs> and so we looked at each other, we said, yeah, <laughs> you know, because, you know, we're, we're young. Right. And so we went to Vancouver. Mm. And and that's when we got that's when my career really started was in Vancouver. Interesting, because that's all we did was play music and then sleep all night. And, mm -hmm. You know, work all night and then sleep all day. 
And what episode? L.A. L.A. Uh, I did the exactly the same thing. Uh, we got arrested and for stealing here, cars, doing different things. Yeah, it was just. And when we met, hey, we started telling each other that's exactly the same story. Right. We should get together. Right. Okay. And how did you? So <laughs> I, I, I read how you. So you was it? Was it? You didn't want to go to the war, so you took off to Canada. I did. So tell us about that part. No, you don't want to. No, I don't want to. You don't want to share today. Okay, I will. Just leave right. it. <laughs> It was, it was, I was, I was. He, he, he gets nervous because when we first snuck, we had to sneak into Canada. I, I mean, was, into I was LA. Chicago and so we'd be on the US from Canada. <laughs> right. <laughs> leave, yeah, he, leave the they weren't Canada. expecting a Mexican sneaking in from Canada. So we'd be on stage and I'd say, uh, any FBI people here tonight? No, fuck. Cheech would say, shut up, man. Shut up. No bullshit, man. The FBI was after me. And so, and so, so anyway, I was part of the draft resistance movement under David Harris and our. our Muhammad yeah. Ali, tell him. Muhammad Ali signed my draft card. Really? M. Ali, I'm with you if you're with me. Wow. And, you, and that's when you quit, right? Uh, no, that's I was like my last semester in, in school at Cal State Northridge, Valley State at the time. Uh, it was Valley State I, back then. It was Valley State back then. Okay. And I and I, I took a pottery class because there's this really cute girl who says, "What are you doing for this class?" I don't know. I'm gonna take pottery with me. Oh, okay. Boom. I so I took pottery, flipped out. Pottery is my life now, and I quit all my other classes, quit my job, got a loan, and did pottery. So I wanted to be a potter. But at the same time, I was this draft resistor, and so they were after us. You know, they were starting to send the— Crack down. Uh, they, yeah, they were mm -hmm. starting to send people to Leavenworth and shit. And I was a student. I was a 2S student, So they, but they changed our, our classifications and then said that we're, we're going to be the first ones drafted and sent to the front lines in Vietnam. And so I said, well, that's a really good plan. Um, so I, 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 I wanted to continue pottery. So my pottery teacher said he had this student in Canada that started in the pottery, ex-student. Maybe he needs a... So I got on the dog and went to man, I went into uh, Canada and I was there for the next three years awaiting my pending trial that was going to come, which happened, which came. Three years later, we got, when we came back to uh, the, uh, the case went to court and, uh, and, and got thrown out. And we, which we knew it was going to happen. Well, we hoped they would happen. You know, they got thrown out. That week, they sent me another notice to appear for physical. Uh, you know, this is three years later. And then a week later, they sent me another notice to... Fuck. So, but I had broken my leg really badly skiing in Canada, which I'd never skied before. And, well, you uh, took Mexican lessons. Yeah. <laughs> ex ex explain what that means. Yeah, yeah I'm Mexican dying. Mexican lessons, oh, sir. You need skis. You need skis. And, and proper ski clothes. Those jeans won't you cut it. Hey, he was out there with jeans and a t-shirt on. I, you know, I had jeans. <laughs> I didn't have money to buy ski clothes. And so, and, so, uh, and so I came back. But it got thrown out. And uh, so then we were free to do Cheech and Chong. But in the interim, man, you know, it was kind of a little, little dicey because I was back in the country illegally. Uh, being, you know, I was illegal both ways. You know, so. <laughs> but there's an old joke, you know. That, what do you, what do you call a, a musician without a girlfriend? Hmm. Homeless. Homeless. <laughs> Down the road. And that uh, was us. Uh, I heard that. that. Was us. If it wasn't for girls, yeah. right. we wouldn't Thank be here you. today. I mean, you used to kind of see that in the movies. You hang with a lot of girls and kind of find your way. How did you guys meet, though? Like, how did you meet? You're well, clean. You're already there. I had a, I had, like, had a couple of clubs. Again, very serendipity. Topless. Nightclubs. I had two nightclubs literally given to me. Say, hey, do you, because of the band. We had the the hot band, and a guy bought a, a nightclub or a building, and he wanted to, to shades. Get a, a, no, this a is another going. one. Oh, okay. And so they, would you like a club? Yeah, of course. So I I started a after hours club, which that's where I met Red Fox, and that's where I met all the you know Motown people and everybody, you know, and uh, and it was because uh, our band was so so good that we got discovered by uh, Diana Ross and the Supremes. Mm. They came down and, and uh, it was, again, sex has a lot to do with it. Because Barry Gordy was uh, doing Diane at the time. Mm. And so Diane said, hey, I've, I saw this band, an incredible band. And so Barry said, okay, I'll, I'll come and check them out and get a little booty call in the, in the meantime. So. <laughs> So Barry showed up and he saw us, signed us, and then 
Motown. Forgot about us. <laughs> then forgot about you. Yeah. And so then we gigged our way to Detroit. And I, I wrote a song called Does Your Mama Know About Me? Mm -hmm. Diana Ross <laughs> loved it. <laughs> Everybody recorded it. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, Diana, Diana Ross, Ross recorded it. And uh, uh, let's see. And who, uh, that put me in good graces with Barry. Yeah. But uh, but then Bobby Bobby was Bobby uh, Taylor. old school uh, rock and roll singer, you know, old school R and B singer. In other words, you had a couple of jobs when you're old school. And one was being a pimp. <laughs> first and foremost. Yeah. yeah. And uh, again, first, if you're, first. don't have a girlfriend, first, you're first. homeless. Yeah. Right. You know, and uh, and so Bobby's mentality couldn't fit in with success on, on a bigger on scale. A big, on mm -hmm. a big scale, you know. Mm -hmm. So so Bobby went his way, and then I got fired from Motown. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Because I had a, another gig to play. Well, I had to get my green card. And that's how I. That's Me too. How I, I, I my, my where at? Where are you getting your green card at? <laughs> what it side? It was just laying there. Just wherever. It was, it was just laying there. It didn't have my name on it, but it was just laying there. <laughs> so, yeah, you, so I got my green card and then... Uh, and then we met. He was running a, a his family owned. It was a family owned uh, the, the no, junk. It was another club that was given to it me. Was given to it was a uh, dinner club in Chinatown in Vancouver. Yeah. And so I turned it into a strip club. And we're doing good. That's why I knew about LaVonda and all that, you know, because strippers were good and everything. But after I got fired from Motown, I went back to work the clubs to put another band together, actually. And then uh, then I was watching the, the strippers because I had a choice that I could work in the after hours club or be with the naked girls. And I thought, mm, mm, I tough decision. I think I'll do with the girls. You know? right. so, so then I watched and I realized that they look more beautiful when they come on with their street street clothes. Exactly. And so I said, wow. And they're good actresses, you know, because when you're a stripper, you're, it's an act. And so I said, so I went, and, so I, I created a improvisational acting uh, troupe with the, with the girls still doing their strip, mm -hmm. but they would, uh, would have their street clothes on. We'd, we'd do sexy bits that we got from Playboy magazine and, mm. <laughs> and, uh, and but fully and so, clothed. And so I had a straight man. We had a, I had a partner that had long hair and a straight guy that looked like a cop. Well, he got fired because we had publicity with uh, publicity shot taken on the front page of the paper with brick lens and the girl's titties on either side of them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, his, and his Christian wife says, no. Found, mm. out, found out what he was up to. <laughs> <laughs> so so time, he, he called time. me. He said, man, I can't, I can't work anymore. Uh -huh. And so there was a, a mutual f fan, uh, a Russian, that owned a hippie newspaper. Ukrainian. Uh, Ukrainian? Yeah, was yeah. he Ukrainian? Tadarik. Uh, and, and so he told me, he's, he was a big fan of the show, and he says, I know just the guy that you need in your show. And so I went down and I met Cheech at, at his, uh, the hippie newspaper thing. And when I first met Cheech, I, I, I couldn't figure out what he was. And he wasn't, come, you know, he's hiding the fact that he was Mexican, you know. Because he was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, you get to a he, certain he was age, you know. Richard Marin. <laughs> He wasn't Richard Marin. Yeah. We didn't hear the Marin until we got down there. It's all about, it's all about <laughs> pronounce it. <laughs> until you understood how to pronounce it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, are you done? Okay. So none of that's true. He, he was never in a band. In a, uh, no, we, we, like you said, it was, it was a friend who had this magazine called Poppin, and, and I was writing for the magazine introduced us and we hear time is right when we both saw each other we both looked at what are you you know be like it's like it's like a mongolian biker or i thought like filipino or, oh, he looked like a mooney yeah a little like, short haircut yeah, yeah. i just come out of the woods man he said mongolian biker <laughs> that's what i thought man like what because he was a blend of something man. he said he was know? a blend like, of something yeah <laughs> And so he, he says, well, come on down. I told him I was this great writer for an improv. Theater. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. So he says, come down and see the show. And I did. And, I, and, and it was okay. You know, the strippers. And, and, but there's one bit that they did. It just cracked me up, you know. So I go, okay, I'll join this thing as a writer. And I started writing for the, for the improv company. And then 
And then, uh, and then filling in for people that weren't there, I'd do all the, all, every part in the show. So finally, you know, I could do any, the whole show. At the end of the day, the troops split up, and Tommy and I were ones left together. So what do we do? Well, we, we performed on. one time uh, for the Three Dog Night. Remember the Three Dog Night, that band? Not familiar. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, you wow. are a youngster, right? Youngsters. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, they they were very popular. They were wow. bigger than uh, they had more hits than, than uh, they had uh, like some thirty top ten hits or something. Anyway, uh, the the the, my, the drummer was my 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 first wife uh, was a beautiful black lady from Calgary named Maxine. Well, her brother Floyd Sneed was the drummer of Three Dog Night, and so they so they came they came. Uh, to town, and so we put a show together that, for them with the improv. It was the last uh, show we did with all the girls and everything. And then, uh, the, then Cheech and I put a band together, and uh, we we're going to. Then we got a gig at the Gardens, uh, Battle of the Bands, and so we went down there to play the Battle of the Bands. We had our bass player and our, everybody all ready to go, but we went on and did comedy instead. You know, to begin with, we we're going to do a few comedy bits and then go to music. We never got to the Went music. so well, huh? We just played, did the comedy, took a bow, and then the bass player goes, oh, when's our next gig, boss? Right, <laughs> right. Because he never played a note. Yeah, yeah. And then on the way home, uh, we were driving in my dad's car and the windshield wipers were, weren't working. And so we were taking turns leaning out with a coat hanger, working the windshield wipers, oh, trying to figure out what to call ourselves. Mm -hmm. you know, and it was like Richard and Tommy, nah. Marin and Chong, Marine. Nah. So finally, I said, to Chief, <laughs> "I said, uh, don't you have a nickname?" And he said, "Cheech," and that was it. Mm. Cheech and Chong, Cheech and Chong, and it was never Chong and Cheech because being musicians, we knew that it scanned better. Cheech and Chong, it was mm -hmm. more rhythmic. Yeah, and so that's what it was. Yeah. Teaching yeah, we're going to take over the world as soon as we can get these wipers fixed. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously starting in the music space, transitioning to improv and then ultimately comedy, like who were some of your guys' earlier influences? Was it was it strictly music or did you like people on the comedy side oh, yeah. as well? Yeah, I grew up loving comedy, okay. you know, like in every form. I used to, everybody, every comedian was on the Ed Sullivan show mm -hmm. or and any of those guys. I, mean, I, I loved comedy and I mm -hmm. memorized all their routines and stuff. And my cousins and I, we... Uh, some others brothers bye bye tommy uh, he just died tommy smothers yeah. and they were the, they were heroes and lenny bruce and, and all those guys lenny bruce man and so uh, so we we had the same frame of reference you know i think that cuz i grew up in an all black neighborhood half my life in south central and then an all white neighborhood in granada hill so one day everybody was black and then the next day everybody was white <laughs> <laughs> what he happened went, in the nighttime <laughs> he went from hey mexican to excuse me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was Canada. <laughs> that was Canada. They said, excuse me, sir. <laughs> so anyways, you know, but because, you know, when when you have this, you listen to the same records, or have the same comedy influences, it, you know, it it, it, it it makes it easier because you have this this background that you know where everybody's coming to. So when we got together, like, you know, we, we like the same people and listen to them and we're, you know, encyclopedic about them. Long lost brothers. Yeah. It was, it was, Who would have thought? In 71, you guys dropped your first comedy album, self-titled Cheech and Chong, ended up being nominated for six Grammys. Uh, you took home one. Um, do you think that art of comedy is has kind of lost no, no, I don't think so. I think I'm talking more... from from an album standpoint. Oh, albums, yeah, probably albums. Yeah, yeah. albums are lost. <laughs> yeah, just in general, it's, it's TikTok now. Yeah. So you instead of an hour and a half album, you got twelve second bit. Get yeah. it done. Yeah, that's it's, what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't it funny too? Because at one time, the singles had to be under two minutes, mm -hmm. and yeah. then MacArthur's Park. Uh, come along and it was like a 12 minute bit or something mm -hmm. and that that changed it and but now it's like uh tiktok you know, no albums uh, people bring albums and they don't you know they don't know i what came they home are. one time my 12 year old son was standing in front of i bought this old console uh record player that you could pick up for nothing you didn't know what it was because <laughs> they were useless uh -huh. <laughs> and, and I, I came home one day in the l.a I mean, in Canada, and my son's standing there with the album, 
looking for a slot to stick it in. Right. Like a CD? <laughs> he didn't know how to work yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. What's the backstory of Basketball Jones? Oh, uh, that, <laughs> that was, we're on our way to the Laker game. Do you want to tell it? No, no, you tell it. No, you tell it. Because, do you want to tell it? Yeah. Okay, go tell it. We're on our way to the Lakers game. <laughs> no, he always, yeah, he doesn't believe in half the shit I say. You know? <laughs> We're on the way to, or, or when he believes it, then he'll steal it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're on our way to the Lakers game. And Cheech is in the, in, in the back seat. I'm in the, in the, uh, what the passenger side. J Nicholson is driving. Jack Nicholson. And Jack Nicholson. And we're late getting there, of course. And so Jack drives on the wrong way on Manchester Avenue for about three miles. Damn. On the wrong way. And Cheech is in the back singing, I got basketball Jones. <laughs> got basketball Jones. There, there was this there was a song out called, called Love, Love Jones. Jones out. And, 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 and Cheech is singing, Basketball Jones, I got basketball, and, and it just stuck in my mind. Ah, oh, that was funny. We got to record that shit. <laughs> so we did Jones. the next day. Yeah. Yeah. We we went in there, recorded oh. it. It was so easy. That's and, the great oh. thing about record industry in those days. I mean, you make a movie, and it takes forever to make it, and then it takes forever before it comes out. In the record industry, you go in the studio, and you could be on the air the next day. We were man, so it was like fast, you know. So you could really. Uh, uh, describe what was going on in the scene around you, and that's what made it so fresh, you know. So that was that was I, I miss records. And we used to play basketball, uh, you know, pickup yeah. games. You oh, know, that's right. We played at UCLA one time. Oh yeah, that was that's yeah, that's what well, we went to UCLA. Did you? Yeah, and that was always. But they had this one game back. where they had it was a charity game where they had all the UCLA guys that had gone on to the pros uh -huh. at, with celebrities, and they split them in half. You know, mm -hmm. half of the UCLA guys on one team, mm -hmm. half the, and then and celebrities, and we everybody was there. And Michael Jackson, no, no, my, no, Jerma uh, Jackie. Jackie, we used to Jackson. play with them and all, all, all the Hollywood stars, you know, and in at Polly and Marvin uh, Gaye, Marvin Gaye, Marvin Gaye played there. with us, yeah, huh? You look, he said, You're looking at him. He said, Who, who, who was good back then? Who, who could really to, play? They used to call me Wilt the Stump. <laughs> <laughs> Wilt the Stump. <laughs> we used, we, when we were touring, we'd go around to the YMCA, yeah, we'd play pickup games. Y. Oh, they probably, and, man, you, and we got some of the best comedy there. Uh, I was about one saying, time we're man. playing a couple of ghetto guys, you know, and this one brother's coming down and he's holding his finger up like one, and his partner goes, what the fuck's that, man? <laughs> what does that mean? In What's the that wide? mean? We got a play <laughs> that I don't know game, about. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to play with people like that. I don't want to uh, be on this team. So hold on. Back to Jack Nicholson driving down the wrong way on <sighs> Manchester heading to the forum. That ended safely. Apparently, oh, yeah, <laughs> no, no trouble. Oh, hey, oh, Mr. Nicholson, come on, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Would you like to drive on the wrong side on our street? <laughs> oh no, it was. It was uh, what, were, what what was the form like back in the day? Because we had we've had magic on here. We hoping to get Kareem, but we've heard legendary stories about the the, the club inside the form and Showtime. the game and well, the, the cheerleaders. Oh yeah. Well, the worst thing, Jerry Buss, the owner, he was one of the people, man, mm -hmm. and he never had a box. Mm -hmm. He had seats with the people, man. So, he was touchable. <laughs> so we, we did say, you want to sit with Jerry Buss? No, man, I want to see the game. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we had we had first row seats. Oh, did you? All showtime, you know. It wasn't the ones on the court, but the next mm -hmm. the next aisle, there was an aisle. And, mm -hmm. But we had those seats for a long time, and all the Lakers were our buds, you know. That's really cool. Yeah, was fun. One time I had, I had a friend that had seats at uh, the Clippers mm -hmm. when they were, like, They've when kind of they've kind of in the high school gym. Right, they've always kind of been know. like this. And I was at a game <laughs> on the ringside one time. Uh -huh. And Charles Barkley was uh, the other guy. And I saw that Barkley could get affected if if you uh, heckle him, but you got to heckle him properly. And the way to heckle him, especially your ringside, talk on your normal voice because they can hear everything. And so I'm sitting there and I say, "Watch Barkley, watch him. He's ball hauling." He won't pass the ball until it's too late. Watch. And the next thing you know, he passed the ball when it's too late. And then Barkley got so pissed. And I'd do it in such a way that I, I wouldn't be looking at him. I'd be just talking, looking somewhere yeah, yeah, else. Yeah. 
And so Barkley didn't know where it was coming from. <laughs> <laughs> and he came over to the guy next to me. I'll fuck your mama. I'll fuck your mama. <laughs> 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 I'll fuck your wife. <laughs> Yeah. So Jump then he went away, and the guy's looking at him like that. Um, <laughs> so he started like, coming down again. I started heckling him again. He goes, "Shut up!" <laughs> yep. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> yep. What yeah. was the comedy scene like in LA as you guys are, you know, climbing, it, climbing the ladder? It was bubbling, man. Was there it? was a lot of comedians out there, you know, because there was these the, the, these comedy clubs started the appearing. We were in one of the very first one. It was like right, right on Sunset Strip, and and uh, all tiny little rooms. But there was a, a ton of comedians out there, man. Everybody, but we were the only kind of hippie talking about weed or what was going on in the scene so we were unique in that sense you know? there's a place on sunset called canopos yeah and it was right in, it was a steakhouse and the owner the kid the the father the the son of the owner decided he wanted to get into comedy and so he he got a microphone up in the steakhouse and he had a, they had an upstairs where you could use his address room and so he'd have like a about six or seven comedians and so we joined the, the, the group. But when we did a bit called The Dogs, now forget this is a steakhouse, and the dogs were, I'm, were smelling each other's butt. And it was so funny and so shocking, but it's still a steakhouse. People mm -hmm. are still, eating. still eating dinner. The waitresses would get embarrassed. They would run outside when we did the bit <laughs> because yeah. it was so rank. Right. In fact, we got paid 50 quid in London not to do the bit. Yeah. Oh, really? They paid you not to do it. <laughs> not to not do it. Do it. <laughs> was the, the joke? It was the, Ronnie Scott's. Ronnie Scott. Ronnie Scott's. He said, hey, boys, great show. Uh, here's 50 quid. Don't do that bit. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't snoop Leave that one out. Uh, I mean, you guys were uh, against the grain from a standpoint of cannabis and in and, and movies and in, in, in your bits and in your, in, in your stand-up. Was there push back at all or it was fuck it i mean you guys are doing motion pictures well i went to jail weed in the 70s i went to jail for th nine months that, that off that bit of a push up push back yeah you yeah. Yeah. something like being chong right yeah. Chong. Yeah. Yeah. everybody else got house arrest or uh -huh. nothing so i had the good sense not to be chong uh-huh you were the other yeah Chichi, but, but, no what we what we attacked more than anything right from the get-go was racism that's what we attacked. We changed the conception of, of uh, Chicanos with the with the headbands, you know, being the we gang. We him the headband. <laughs> the gang guys, yeah. And, and, and we did it purposely. Like my character in Up in Smoke was a, a rich Jewish kid, you know. And, and here I am, you know. And, uh, and rich Chinese that's how we kid. Met. <laughs> <laughs> what was your, a rich Chinese kid. Yeah. What was uh what was your cousin's name in that movie that you went to go Red. see at the house? Red. Yes. Red. Yeah, Red. Yeah. D. Wayne Mendoza. Yeah. D. Had, Wayne Mendoza. He had Red. you guys on Red a mission to find the, some tree. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, the actor Tom Skerritt. Yeah. Yeah, that was Tom Skerritt. No, I was I was Red. Oh, in, uh, in the no, movie. no, no, or oh, the other character. No, the so next you, movie. Yeah, no. What was it? Strawberry. What was it? Strawberry. Strawberry. That was Tom Skerritt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strawberry was Tom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what I was talking about. Yeah, he's still alive. He just is he ninety. Yeah, he's in his ninety now. Wow. Just got to get my my crack yeah, here. Your, there you go. <laughs> Legal crack. Which I remember by Pee Wee Herman. Oh, he's the greatest. <laughs> he was the best. Was Pee Wee that? Herman. He was a member of a group called the Groundlings, which was a very a first uh, uh, improv group in L.A. They're still here. Yeah, they're still there. I mean, and everybody came out of the Groundlings. And so we, we saw them and kind of raided the whole company and put them in our movies. Pee Wee Herman, Edie McClurg, uh, uh, Phil Hartman, all, all those guys would put them in the movies. And it was because they knew how to play improv. You mm -hmm. know? They, were, they were jazz musicians. And, and comedy, and so we got along great. You know? And Pee Wee was great. You know? he, was, he had that character right from the beginning. Uh, always, always interesting. And that wasn't the only thing he did, but he had that character uh -huh. right from the beginning. And we just okay, well, hey, put that character here and be be the clerk in the office or be the guy on the uh -huh. stage. You know, so. it worked out really well. He was a, he was he was a funny guy. How 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 easy was it incorporating cannabis into your movies into everything? It was. 
we got away with it because uh, it was over before anybody could do anything, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in and out. We never really smoked. Uh, we never broke any laws, you know. Yeah. We, Did you guys really smoke weed in the movies, though? Uh, no. In between takes. Okay. Between so it wasn't takes. any of the but shit the, you were But the real camera? stuff was Indian. Okay. No, we, was, we couldn't. Uh, okay. It was, it was stunt weed. Yeah, stunt <laughs> it was weed. horrible. <laughs> Horrible. But we, we would get smoked before the take, and mm -hmm. sometimes uh, they'd say, okay, uh, we're rolling, and we'd be, yeah, we're rolling too. Right? <laughs> and so we, we, we missed the cue, uh -huh. and they're run, and back in the day it was film. Right. And so they were wasting all this money on yeah. film, and they're, are you guys ready? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> then we'd wake up and, and do the shot. How much would be ad libbing and how much would be script once you guys kind of start about going? 50 /50, oh, really? Okay. Right. But, but we'd ad lib on a script. Right, right, right. right. Put your touch on it. Because that, that scene in the car, we used, did that every night on stage. Right. But there was stuff that we did for the film that you, we never did before. Mm -hmm. And it was only captured because we were doing it on film. Gotcha. But we would improvise all those parts mm -hmm. you, know? Uh, you know it's like taking i want to be my say play my funny funny valentine but miles davis plays it different than mm -hmm. my funny valentine so and, and all the actors that we had were phenomenal yeah. writers as well you know they're good like stacy keach uh, sergeant stadenko yeah. you know he basically wrote his 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 and his bits. troop and his bunch and, of guys. And he, and he put his own jokes in there. Yeah, you know? yeah. Hey, what do what, what, what priests eat on Friday? <laughs> what kind of meat do I don't know. Eat on? Tell us. None. <laughs> None. <laughs> None. <laughs> <laughs> I was, the year I was born, 78, uh, mm. Up in Smoke, you turned a small budget into $44 million mm. and yeah. earned two more films. This is the year I was born. Really? Uh, that's how I Shit, that's how long y'all been smoking. And that's how much money they said they made. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right. They ain't even actually how much number. money they really made. Right, 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 right. That's crazy to think. Woo. You put on a lot of people. What does the trilogy rank in your eyes? Uh, up in smoke, definitely. Uh I like next movie too. It's actually a funnier movie. Yeah. You know, laugh for laugh. And uh what's one uh you like? Still smoking. Still smoking. Still smoking like has all favorite. our old uh, yeah. bits that we never got around to shoot a movie about. Yeah. And so we put them in uh, there. And we knew that we wouldn't be doing those bits anymore. So so like the Invisible Wrestler and all those great bits, man. Mm -hmm. they're, they're classic. You mentioned going to jail. Were you in jail with Jordan Belfort? Yeah. Talk to us about uh, just your guys' back and forth and kind of friendship and how that kind of turned into... Well, he wouldn't French kiss right away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it took a while. It took a while. Little and I just told him, it's just like slam, sushi. Man. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was, he was great, man. It was the other prisoners that, that had problems with him. You know, yeah. I had no problem with it. Wasn't yeah. anybody, you know, I was a celebrity. Yeah. So I was like, Jesus walking around. <laughs> <laughs> and I had everybody. Uh, the the warden, one time we shot a, a, a podcast for the documentary and we were using the warden's office in the main, the main building. But you know how movies are, you know, you're the king, you know, so... So we were, they were setting up, and I could hear the warden and them walking around in the other room. So I yells, hey, quiet in the set. <laughs> we're shooting in here. <laughs> and everybody got all quiet and tippy toe. And here's a warden tippy, you know, <laughs> tippy toeing around for no reason, man. You know, just that. Right. Here's a, one of his, his con men <laughs> in there telling him, fucking right. with him. I'm running know. shit now. Yeah. Be, being that both of you guys are basically uh, trendsetters in the stoner comedy space, but it's just really comedy. Um, do y'all get offended and uh, when people say stoner comedy? And was it did it affect y'all relationship with being the face? Like so many people judging y'all and saying different things. Did it ever affect y'all relationship? No, no, uh, not really. Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't get into Disneyland one time because I had a T-shirt that was obscene. You know, and and I held a grudge for a while. And in fact, when I got offered to do with Lion King, I said no. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and I I missed out. Brilliant on it. move there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, tell me, see this check I got from Lion? Holy Jesus! Right. <laughs> but no, it, the racism. 
I, I realized myself, you know, over the years, I, I was really brought up as a white supremacist, you know, seriously. I had all my friends for, from the country, and, and even though I was uh, found out now that I'm part native, uh, the, uh, we were, ha I was half Chinese originally, you know, <laughs> that's what I started But not out. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not more now. Originally. <laughs> but... It was always racism that we, we encountered. You know, that's my, my brother is three years older than me, and he fought going to school and coming home. You know, and that's the way it was back then. You know, you'd look at the toughest guys would see each other and make a date and go out in the back and, 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 and fight, you know. And it was uh, brutal, you know, coming up like that. And, and, and when I was uh, a teenager, I saw... The, the 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 trend was to become a, a pachuco. Right. Uh, pachuco is a Mexican gang guy. Like, uh, the zoot zoot, you know, the zoot zoot, 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 zoot yeah. the baggy pants, blood in, blood out. Yeah, yeah. 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 Zoot, and they ha they always had a the zoot tattoo zoot yeah. right there in the middle, right there, mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. and, and it was funny because tattoos are like advertising for criminals. You know, yeah. you'd have the show the me a white supremacist tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> and so my white supremacy tattoo, I, I, my house was also used as a halfway, halfway house, house for, for guys getting out of prison. People getting out of jail. And this one kid, now guy you guys got fuck out of with jail. Us being honest. And, he, and he gave me this tattoo. Wow. See? It's a white supremacy tattoo. He didn't know it was just a tattoo. Yeah, I got a free tattoo. And I didn't know it. <laughs> I didn't know it for years. Until I was on TV down south. Oh, you were south in jail. Somewhere. You know the guy told you. No, it was a down. It was on TV. It on was television. on TV. Oh, really? On television, and the guy looked at me, a biker. He goes, "That's a white supremacy tattoo." I said, really? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> but it was free. <laughs> no, but I put it up here. It's a, it's a homemade they, needle. They would take a needles, uh. put them together over a, a pencil, and stick it in India ink, and then. Jab, yeah. jab that's a good time. way to stay yeah. healthy yeah. <laughs> that's what that's the jail house that's that shit hurt down there so i was going to get it yeah. to cover it up you know change everything and my son paris said, no dad that's og that's art you that's don't because it, that was og because one wing's bigger than the other right? <laughs> <laughs> what year was that what year did you get that tattoo that had to be 50 probably 55 56 that was 20 years before you were born. It was 23, actually. Yeah, a little bit of time. <laughs> In the 50s. Yeah. Uh, hey. Mm -mm. It's a long time. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I've seen a lot. <laughs> For real. Movies like Friday, Half Baked, Howard and Kumar, yeah. all cult classics. Um, you have to feel like y'all pioneers of that. Well, of course, okay, man. Dude, yeah. <laughs> of course. And all those guys come up to us and tell us that. Yeah, Everybody so. was in every one of those movies. Uh, uh, Chris Tucker, you know, I met him on the yeah. road. Oh, man, we used to you know, do, do guys all the time. So, you know, uh, you know, we we were big in the black community always. Yes. Because we grew up in the black community. Right. You know, and, and other, other communities, but... Black people really related to us. Yes. It wasn't just because of the weed. It's because we played that kind of music. And, and the struggle, too. And the struggle y'all exactly. went through. Yeah. And growing exactly. up in Calgary, it was really hard to be around black people. Mm -hmm. Both there of were them. none. <laughs> there were like five families, and, and I swear to God, I, you know. And then when when I I, I started dancing uh, Lindy Hop. And of course, my partner became this really good dancer, black girl, and she was the one that introduced me to the football player Tommy. Uh, and 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 then we had a show one time where Tommy and her would dance, and we'd play music, and you know we did a floor show with that, you know. So so my introduction was more like schooling, you know, because uh, it wasn't just I knew had black friends, man. Mm -hmm. I had a, I had a. I, yeah, the name. I got to the point where I I got my own racist name, you know. Hey, Chinaman. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Bob Marley says. That's what Bob, when we met Bob Marley. Yeah, it was in a dressing room with a smoke filled, and all of a sudden I hear, "Hey, Chinaman, say something funny, man." <laughs> Bob said that on one of his friends. <laughs> no, it was Bobby. Bob man. said it. Hey, Bob, tell me, say something funny. <laughs> <laughs>
Because, uh, no, he was they were, they were on their own deal. <laughs> no, but everybody else, you know, right? Sure. No, we had, we had. No, I got. Uh, you know, I earned my my uh, your stripes. My. Uh, Mm -hmm. my prison sentence i yeah. earned it man yeah. you know i went through it and that's why motown you know this when i see Smokey now Smokey it gives me big hugs man because mm -hmm. he knows that i was in that secret songwriting little cadre club that they, that have, they have, have you know mm -hmm. and i got in there you know when you get one of them motown stars to record your song you know mm -hmm. everybody recorded them right diana ross the jermaine jackson stephanie mills the harlettes you know who the Harlets are? The they were the backing group for Bette Midler. Okay. It was Bette Midler and the Harlets, and in that group was uh uh uh, uh the girl, girl Kate, was on Katie Kate Katie yeah. Segal, oh. Katie Segal from Married with Children. Yeah. Uh, Linda Hart, who was uh, co star was my girlfriend in Tin Cup, and uh, some uh, uh, a Norwegian or a Swedish girl, but they recorded and had a hit. Mm -hmm. uh, does your mama know about me too? Mm. You guys obviously came out the gates with the once you connected with a lot of success. You guys parted ways for a while. We don't have to get into that part, but what I want to ask you guys as as being able to come back together, what did you learn about yourself um, during your guys' time apart? Hmm. Well, you can't make it in California without a Mexican. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I don't care what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, I don't care what you're doing. Oh, and man. it took him that long to figure it out. Man. <laughs> and sometimes you'll say, "Are you Mexican?" And the guy will go, "Okay." Yeah. Spanish. And then, then his friend will say, "He's from Guatemala." <laughs> <laughs> you're in LA. You're a Mexican. Because there's <laughs> there's racism amongst the oh, the, yeah. the, the clans Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it it goes everywhere. Yeah, know? yeah. Perfect. No, I I uh, I appreciate the fact that we broke up long enough to, so that we could become individuals. Yeah. Okay. You know, instead of just being, you know, relying on someone there that's always there. Mm -hmm. You know, this way you have to do both parts yourself more yeah. or less. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I I like I appreciate that, and I, and I respect it too. You know. I respect the uh, the the aloneness. Yeah, being being able to stand on your own, yeah, on your own, then come back together just makes it strong. Makes both of yeah. us yeah. strong. Yeah, it's yeah. like we, you know, when we came back together, it was like we never left. Right. I mean, it was like he said, "Come down here and join me in this club in La Jolla." There were you and Shelby were doing a club, and I said, "Come on and and just sit in with us." I said, okay, so. But they they go on stage, they start to then, and then then they. I don't know if he even announced it, and I just came through the audience, and got I don't on. Remember. I don't remember. I know they went crazy. God said, "Wow!" And, and and we never rehearsed, never even talked about. That was about your guys' it. first time back together. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And never Twenty years. Talked. And wow. boom. <laughs> and we just killed it, man, you know. <laughs> and so it's okay. Like you never left. Yeah, like we never left. I read at times you guys would, you know, kind of have some conflict off the stage, but when you came together for your act, yeah. it was like yeah. who would, no one would ever know. Yeah. And exactly. what do you guys attribute that to? Just your willingness to get the job done or? Uh, greed. <laughs> <laughs> greed. Greed. I indulged his My son would say, you know, <laughs> you're doing fine, Dad, but you know what you could make if Cheech and Chong were back there? <laughs> <laughs> And so my son actually got us back together because right? Right? we had a right. meeting and it didn't go that well. You know, mm -hmm. we had our old argument came out. Yeah. But then I, I texted Cheech and I said, you know, it was nice seeing you. I hadn't seen you for a while. It was really nice seeing you. Mm -hmm. You know, too bad we couldn't uh, work things out. Well, my son intercepted my email and he wrote his own mm -hmm. in my book. Mm -hmm. hey, Please, I'll do anything, anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, let's get together and, and we can do yeah, this yeah, and that yeah. and everything else. Really? And so then my son told me, he said, first of all, he says, how did it go with Cheech? I said, oh, not so well. He said, he's coming over. You're back together. <laughs> wow. Beautiful. It's yeah. happening. Yeah. I said, what? He Shout said, out yeah. to your son. Then he told me what he did. I, yeah. I, I got your email. And I'm glad he did. Yeah. Tell, tell your son the world says thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. We do. My ex-wife ex ex got a hold of my emails one time and did some things she shouldn't have did. So yeah. luckily, <laughs> luckily, your guys has worked out in a different way. Uh, they did. It did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've heard those stories. <laughs> we used to talk before they rolled a the film. That we, sometimes in movies we'd be talking, blah, 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 blah. Hey, you know, they got the camera rolling here. Oh, right. yeah. oh shit. Let me and then we'd up. see it at dailies, you know. Uh, okay. That's funny. Uh, stigmas throughout over the years about cannabis and, and, and 
how do you feel like the, the progress uh you know over the, over the last few decades oh, it's, a, it's it's you know it's everyday use i mean it's you know which is more popular beer weed uh weed weed you know i mean it's it it, it it crosses every single line it, race uh, gender uh, any, anything uh, old young i mean you know there's guys that are 100 years old still smoking right. weed you know so uh, it just it just enters into every and and the fact that it does changes your perception well it's it's i want to be that guy yeah it's a burning you're bush on, you're on a good path a hundred year old still smoking you're on a good path for that yeah it's a burning bush that is mentioned in the bible Mm. You know, when Moses took a hit Talk, of the burning bush, burning, burning bush. <laughs> and God talked to him, and God said, hey, Mo. Yo. Pass that. Yo, Mo. <laughs> Pass that, Snoop. <laughs> this bud's for Jews. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> As oh, though, shit. and that's how it got in the Bible. That's how it got in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Bible was written on hemp paper. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All the signs were there, and yeah. it was medicine four thousand years ago, mm -hmm. and it's medicine now. Still yeah. medicine. It never stopped being medicine. Do any of you guys still consume? Well, yeah, I do. Yeah, I so, do. So after, what's well, my job now? So, so after we can consume together. Oh yeah, for so, sure. So I, can, I just want to got to say. I, Blaze one up with cheat the charm. Yeah, you gotta yeah. be able to say that. Even if we just blow the smoke on you, okay. Yeah. <laughs> blow it up his butt. <laughs> Jack got don't, him. Mine don't work anymore. Jack yeah. got that job. Jack got him. Oh, 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 one question: the strength of the plant from yeah. when you guys first started getting it used to be hard to kind of come across a good weed back then. Obviously, uh, you, are you guys no. always had it. No, are you guys kept it on? I always had Mexican weed, man. The, yes. But the strength from then to now. Uh, it's much stronger now. Yeah. I mean, much stronger because they're they're breeding it for that. Right, yeah. You know, they didn't, weed was weed. You get a brick like that mm -hmm. with a dead rat in the middle of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we specially bred this. <laughs> uh, no, no, it was just, you got whatever was in there. Mm -hmm. uh, but now they're specifically a, blending it for, a, or raising it for that. It's a science so, now. Do you yeah. like some of the stronger stuff? Oh, yeah. Do you like some of the stronger stuff? Yeah, yeah, because you don't have to take as much. Yeah, exactly. When's yeah. the last time you bought weed? I don't know. <laughs> I was in my youth. I, I bought be. weed 2016. Really? Because it was a little vendor thing, and you put money in, and it, uh, oh really? You just want to try, want to try it out? out. Huh? Yeah, I, I had to do it. Uh, really? And that's the only time I've ever bought. I don't. Weed. I don't. I can't. I can't remember. I got a friend now. He's a grow freak. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 K Stacy Keach's brother, Jim, uh, St uh, James. No, James 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 Keach. Keach. He's uh, he's crazy about growing everything, mm -hmm. and so we give him some marijuana seeds. Hey, uh, here, mm -hmm. put this in your garden and see what happens. He's growing the best weed. Yeah. Oh, oh, really? Malibu. Interesting. And, and James says, "Yeah, I give it to my friends, and they keep coming back for more." Yeah. I think the best. Well, don't feed them; then they'll stay away. Really? Yeah. <laughs> right. Because of the climate? I don't know what it is, but it's like John Michael Vincent, you know who is mm -hmm. an actor? Mm -hmm. So he was, my, he was my buddy, and he comes over one day, and he has these two plants. He says, hey, I'm growing a, a hundred plants over here in my place, and so I'm going to give you two. All right. All right, great. So I put them, just put them over there outside under the tree, and, and I went on tour. The next day, here, a couple of days later, he gets, gets raided, and they got all the plants, and so these were the only two that survived. And I didn't do anything to them i just put them in pots in the ground and i and went on tour and i came back they had grown through the bottom of the pots and now they were eight feet oh, tall shit. and colas on them that that long wow. man I'm like, magical wow. and it was like seaside sense me that's what we called it well, did and we use him in the movie me. yeah i think so we did yeah we used him in really yeah. next movie because <laughs> i had him you know then i go no, went crazy nice, nice dreams next, nice dreams mm -hmm. with a swimming pool and and so, mm -hmm. I, I but I I didn't do anything, not, not nothing to it, you know, not, not even water. It, uh huh. So wow. Yeah. Hey. So want to have a little fun with this next segment? Uh, feel free to just blurt out your aunt the highest you've ever been. Do you remember where you were? Who was around? <laughs> that wasn't too long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. I'm just as important. Do a show of yes. what the maddest your I'm wife is. That's ever definitely been. Oh, all right. <laughs> the maddest your wife. I like that. Tommy, tell him the birthday story. Hmm? The tell bir him your birthday story. 
Your birthday. Oh, oh the 70 is birthday. When I turned 70. Yeah. Woo. Way back in the olden days. <laughs> we had, my son took care of the dessert. And he had it all medicated, but he didn't tell anybody. Oh, shit. That's fucking... And everybody. we never served enough food. So when the dessert came, everybody was starving. And so everybody dove into the, the edibles. <laughs> and next thing you know, there are people throwing up all over the place. And and, and they couldn't figure out, what the fuck, what's going on? You Happy know? birthday to you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, it was just crazy. Uh Paul Reiser and his wife were there. And next thing you know, uh, Paris is my son's ex-girlfriend, kind of wild young chick. She's in there promoting a threesome with Paul and his wife. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> and they're going for it. She's really good. Everybody's going for it. So, so it was crazy. It was People good were week, passing yeah. out. Oh, it was, it was fun. <laughs> Wow. Um, it's going to be a biopic. Yeah. We're going to do a movie about it. I love it. Um, because that's what we're, from now on, after we uh, release our documentary, uh -huh. it'll be biopics. And, yeah. and we'll go back and teach his history, my history, you know, oh. we're right back to the Aztecs and, <laughs> and uh, Africans, you know. If you guys ever need a, a, a great guy right here, my guy Deion Taylor, this is his office, but as he makes yep. movies, he makes the best movies. So oh, yeah. Right here, movies. yeah. So oh, yeah. If, if, oh, if you yeah. need some We're help. We're going to be dealing with it. Y'all need a stoner brother in the movie. I'm ready. Oh, yeah. You're the I'm brother. I'm ready. Yeah. I'll be the stoner brother. You always movie. have a stoner brother in the movie. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah. He can be you got holes back in, in the, the day. knees, though. That's the only problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to take some holes in the face. And right here. Remember, he used to have the holes in right here, too. Yeah, yeah. Holes, too. Who would want to smoke off? And you back in your heyday, when you guys are in your heyday, between you guys, Snoop, Willie Nelson, Wiz Khalifa, Be Real. Who would we want to? No, who would who who, who would, who would want to smoke off? Oh, who? When you guys are in your heyday. What do we? Do you think maybe oh, Willie? We were, neither one of us were. Any. No, <laughs> no, it wasn't like it's that. All an act, <laughs> <laughs> it's all an act, man. It's all an act. I swear to God, man. It's a, it was all an act. Yeah. I, I got a little. Breath mint that I do now, uh -huh. and it's only ten, uh, 10 milligrams, milligrams, you know, and, and that that'll. Like hey, listen, any more will put my ass in. The <laughs> <laughs> but even back in your guys' younger days, I mean, yeah. it wasn't about uh, the quant uh, the qu uh, quantity; it was about the quality. quality yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. because people, would, would, no, cause people were, would give us stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. That's why I've never bought any weed in, in these years, man. Because mm -hmm. like there are mountains of it wherever you go. And we're musicians back then, and mm -hmm. musicians it goes hand in hand. Yeah. You never bought people would either give it to yeah. you or, or you and know, you just pick a little stand next to the guy that had play. it, you know, uh -huh. yeah. waiting for your turn. Right. You know, that's all. And, and back in the day, they used to make what they called pinners. Mm -hmm. It was marijuana dust, basically, yeah. mm. <laughs> and you. Roll them in the tiniest little pinner, and but it would be good for musicians because you didn't get too stoned. Too fucked up. You know, you just get that little buzz, that, that little in. memory, mm -hmm. because that's mm -hmm. all you need. Mm -hmm. Remember, uh, uh, Pat Morita used to keep that little yeah. folding pipe in his yeah. in his underwear, like yeah. a one hitter. Yeah, there was a little pipe, and it had. Uh, Pat Morita, you know, uh, I've heard the name. Actor yeah. uh, Mr. Miyagi. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He was yeah. he was a stand up. Man. Uh, they, oh, was he? It, the hip nip. That was his, his it was yeah. Japanese. It's uh, crazy what used to fly, not to cut you off, what used yeah. to fly back then, like what you can say and what you can and how exactly. comedy has evolved into like you can't really say anything right now. Oh yeah, I've heard his Red That's Fox his boy. impersonation. Who? That was his boy, Red Fox. Uh, Pat Marina? Yeah, yeah. 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 They were all in that same thing. Yeah. Well, Red, Red gave him money yeah. uh, for his house story. or something. Yeah, he gave him some yeah. money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember that, no. Yeah, he was kind of a mentor a little bit, you know, when we first met him to us because he was a professional comedian at the time. Man. He did something to me that I'll never forget, man. The night before I'm going into jail, I just finished talking to my lawyer who actually told me, I can't talk now, I'm watching the Laker game. And he hung up on me. Next thing I know, I get a call, a phone rings, I pick it up, it's Pat Morita. And he's... Mr. Miyagi. Miyagi. Miyagi, yeah. Miyagi, yeah. And he says, you're going to be okay. You're going to be fine. You know, just take it, do what you got to do, you know. Yeah. And he just gave me, the, it was a little pep talk. Yeah. Serendipity. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. I knew he, that Tommy he, was going to be okay in jail too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew he was going. Is he be fine? It's because he grew up him. with those people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so did I. My dad was a cop, man. So I grew mm -hmm. up with all the juvenile delinquents. You know, mm -hmm. so you know how to navigate. Well, we were in know? jail together one time. Yeah, really in, in Tampa. Tampa. Tell us about it. <laughs> Well, okay. we uh, they busted Jim Morrison earlier because he showed his wiener on, t on yeah. stage, you know, <laughs> and, and, and so they Lizard King. And, and it got dropped for lack of evidence. By lack <laughs> 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 <Not> evidence, <laughs> good one. And so they they came up with a five thousand dollar performance bond, and if we got any trouble on stage at all. The promoter got five thousand dollars, and so with Cheech and Chong, they thought for sure they're going to grab some money, and so we d we did our whole show, no problem, except at the end, and the cops were lying in the stage as if they they were the crowd was going to riot or something, you yeah. know, standing in front of the stage. <laughs> and so che we're doing the dogs, and Cheech is on his hands and knees, and he walks over to one of the cops that were facing away from him. And pick the cop's hat up with his teeth, <laughs> like a dog, <laughs> and goes running back. Well, the, the the cop did not think that was funny, <laughs> and so they're on the phone saying, "We're gonna we're busting Cheech and Chong." And then all the cops started, "Hey, I want to bust him. I got all their records." You know? <laughs> right, right. Let me be a part of this. So they ended up taking us to jail. Yeah. And, and at first, you know, we're still off the show. We're still <laughs> happy. And after a while, we're sitting there <laughs> with the, all, all these other people, man. They kept dragging people into the holding cell unconscious oh, and the dragging them out. holding cell, yeah, like, yeah, for drunks. As long as you sit in that cell, the highs start coming down. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. We <laughs> Reality were, yeah. starts to set in. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then, and then they separated us. At first, Cheech was being funny. Cheech is still just... <laughs> Guy, blonde cop, you know. Big guy. And he goes, oh, oh jail attendee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jail attendee. Could we have some pink toilet <laughs> tissue in here, please? <laughs> and we're the fucking in jail, oh. man. And then next thing you know, the guy at the sale, jail attendee comes up to Cheech and says, you, come with me. <laughs> <laughs> and all I heard Cheech saying, uh, my dad's a cop. You know, <laughs> <laughs> got that out of You get in the elevator, they're going to take you up to the second floor to put you in the cell. And, and you get in the elevator, and it's like, you know, metal, the whole thing. And there's big dents all over this fucking thing, man, but on every wall. And that, this guy's looking at me. And you get up to the second floor, and it's noisy. And it's, and it's hot. And it's fully lit. And, and everybody's, okay, here we go. <laughs> no, don't put me in the lion cage, man. Real. Right. Exactly. Shit got real. Yeah, awful quick. You guys kind of crossing so many barriers uh, on your rise to fame. Who were some people that you thought like, damn, I'm smoking with? Obviously, they probably thought that about you guys. But were you guys in awe of anybody? You know, you just told a quick Bob Marley story. But anybody you guys were in awe of when you guys got a chance to sit down? Oh, and I used to smoke up with George Harrison all the time. George Harrison. Uh, the Beatles. Oh, wow. George. Yeah, George is a cool guy. One, one day I'm smoking, we're smoking, and next thing you know, the joint gets passed over to Tony Dow. You know Tony? Leave it to Beaver. Leave it to Beaver. Oh, shit. He was brother. Wally. Wow. He was Wally. Yeah. Wally, wow. leave it to yeah, Beaver. And he turned out to be a, 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 what do you call it, a sculptor. He's an artist, you know? And so the three of us were there smoking away. Wow. I, we got, uh, George played uh, on... Uh, the Beatles last. What tune did George Harrison play? On on ours? Yeah. Uh, basketball Jones. Basketball Jones, yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk about Basketball Jones. Yeah, he's the good leader. George the played the intro. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. he was in the studio at the same time we were. And so, hey, George, do the intro. He said, yeah, all right. And they said, uh, do you think they're Cheech and Chong? And what do you say? Someone said, what do you think of Cheech and Chong? And George says, I suppose they're funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite guy was Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Mm. And uh, I, was this the Showtime days? Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, right yeah. And 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 uh, uh, my wife and I, Ricky, we we lived at his house when I was mi making up and smoke. Oh, really? Because I didn't want to go all the way out to the beach every day, and I was like, because my call was early. Mm -hmm. So he, he he moved us into his guest house back there, and but he was always been a friend and for, yeah. But uh, 
He had a long reach. Yeah. <laughs> he could reach across the table, man. One time we took him to Dharma Grab, this Morocco restaurant, and they bring all these food, a whole chicken, and he reaches over the whole, and he grabs the whole chicken, and it looks like that in his hand. Right? Okay, thank you very much. What are you guys eating? Yeah. <laughs> Which, uh, what are you, this is mine. What are you guys going to eat? No, he really is just a very he, smart, he would, intelligent, We would guy. exchange uh, weed if we had different weed, and yeah. one day, in fact, the day that Elvis Presley died, I got a call from Kareem almost the same time. I'm watching TV, Elvis is dead. Kareem says, hey, man, come on down. I got some weed. And so I walked down. I lived down the street from him. I walked down. And I got to the, to the mailbox, and I went to ring the bell, and the mailbox lid opened up, and this big hand came Lurch. out with a bag of weed. <laughs> The at the end uh, and I said no thank you <laughs> and I never saw him oh, you didn't even see the green <laughs> he just wanted to give you some weed I just got the weed <laughs> Okay, cream. Uh, it was like lurch came out of the thing. <laughs> I guess you're not dressed yet. Okay, I'll, I'll catch you later. I'll take this back to my house. Yeah, yeah. But wasn't that weird? Elvis died, and soon after they were having a uh, everything on television was Elvis, and my daughter's friend was Lisa Marie. They were best friends at the time, and so they're showing Elvis on TV, and I'm sitting there, and my precious my daughter and and Lisa are playing in the behind us. And when, when they showed their dad, I kind of looked to see how Lisa would react. This is her dad. Right. And she just glanced at it a little bit and then gone. Mm. She did not relate to that guy. Wow. Interesting. It, it, it was weird. So, and sad, too. Mm. Coming up, who's your first celebrity crushes? Celebrity crushes. Celebrity crush. Celebrity crush. Wow. Celebrity crush? Crush? Uh, who was the first guy you went out with? <laughs> <laughs> He's thinking. <laughs> it, hey, it, it make more sense why we dress because we act, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're an asshole just like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's they're up. dressed to like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's a reason. Celebrity crush. Oh, God, I don't know. Annette. <laughs> From the Musketeers. Ooh, Musketeers. Ooh. Mm, she's developing in there. <laughs> <laughs> Musketeers. <laughs> Mine would be Susan Sheridan. Really? Yeah. Remind me of who who is she? Bull, Bull Durham. Bull Durham. Uh, pretty oh, baby. S Susan uh, Sarandon. Atlantic City. Susan yeah. Okay. That's her. That's her real name. So, yeah. Saran Rocky Sarandon. Horror Show. Rocky okay. Horror Show. Yeah. She was the original. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I see why he didn't get your name right for a little while, though, right? I'm used to it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of your guys' favorite snacks or munchie when you guys are really on, what, what's, what's a go-to snack? <laughs> well, I can tell you now because my used to be, it was X-rated. So I... <laughs> <laughs> we don't uh, mind sharing that. I like ice cream. Ice cream? I like ice cream. It's bad for you, but I like it. So. But what about you? Like? Pistachio nuts. Mm, really? Yeah. Interesting. On because the they're good side. for the eyes. I was about to say healthy on the, on the healthy side. I'm thinking yeah, they're, they're bad. good for the eyes, and they're they're salty, so they makes you thirsty. So we forgot to uh, ask you about your daughter. Which one? Ray. RD. She's here. Legend. Yeah. R oh RD. yeah. She's here. She's here. She's uh, having a, a struggle with her career now. You know, a little bit. You know, she hasn't worked for a while, but she's here and she's doing well and she's. That's good. Happy. She's, she's my oldest daughter. Love, you know, yeah. We asked about her. She always, she's, she's the most talented uh, of the gang, you know. Always has been, right from the beginning. She was crazy. She used to give uh, ad advice at three years old. <laughs> life <laughs> advice. Nerdle advice. Right, life advice. <laughs> you know, she was, what is the, uh, Bo Diddley called a mannish boy. A mannish what, boy. What did he call a girl? Yeah, mannish. You know, the mannish boy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what what would be the girl? I don't know. The girlish man. Bossy. <laughs> Bossy. Bossy. Yeah. Bossy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, she's good. And her uh, her son, Morgan's doing really well. And uh, Morgan married a uh, Chinese girl, so I got uh, Cross great grandkids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rainbow. <laughs> Re retro breeding. <laughs> Rainbow. Beautiful. Oh, I got, I got a, a beautiful, beautiful family now. As does Cheech, too. 
Cra- for- as sm- crazy as this world is, yeah. who do you two guys think will benefit from smoking? Oh. From my, smoking? My mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Bob? My mother-in-law? Yeah, yeah, she, she, because, because we, she, my wife is Russian, born and raised, and so my mother in law speaks no English, and blah, blah, blah. And she's always honest about something, or something. And we, but she, she, she roams the refrigerator. She opens the refrigerator and stands in front of her for an hour and looks and sees, so whatever, thing. And so we, we had some, some edibles out there in, in the desert, and her, and her sister, and her daughter tells her, so do whatever you do, don't, don't eat anything in the refrigerator. Just, you know, ask me and I'll, I'll get it for you. And we come home one day and we're on the desert. She's in front of the refrigerator looking and chewing. At the same time, as she found the brownies, man, and went oh, fucking right to them. <laughs> She's like, you know, old and Russian and can't. Uh, and, so, and so, and so, uh, Natasha, my wife, tells me what she did. I said, so, so, what should we do? She says, well, let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> and so she was just like, cool. So it was time to drive her home. We and and I says, wow. How long is Sunset Boulevard? It's like, <laughs> says, oh, mom, you take good. it every day. I'm typing it like, and uh, so we we did after after a while we told her, and she got this kind of gleam in, gleam in her eye, and, and so where was that again? I, I what was that? The candy or the thing? So she wanted to, <laughs> to go, but she she free, the most surprised I've ever been in my life. She speaks no English, no English. I mean, she's been here twenty some years and. To say I want a glass of water, it's a half an hour to get that out, <laughs> and and so we're 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 at the table. This oh, is during COVID, and we're shit. at the table, and I, and I went out and got some Chinese food. <clears throat> Came back, distributed all around. We're eating Chinese food. It was great. The end, and I see her reach into the bag with a fortune cookies, and she pulls one out and cracks it, and whoops out the thing, and I say, and we call her Bob. Her name, in 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 Russian, grandmother is. Babushka, not babushka, babushka. So I ain't saying that every time. So you're Bob now. And so, <laughs> and so he says, hey, Bob, what does your fortune say? Uh, she, goes, she goes, you will have a very auspicious day today as the third trimester of your baba. The fuck? <laughs> And I said, well, this is a setup, man. You know, it's, this is, and her, her, her daughter put, read another one. And so I says, what a glorious day! That you blah blah blah. blah. She reads the whole fucking thing. That's in hard language too. She she took English in in college in in in, in Russia. She can read it, but doesn't understand what she's yeah. reading. Wow, that's <laughs> but crazy. read it perfectly. And I, I sat there like, wow. And, the? and she can use firearms, right? Oh yeah, she's a great shot, and, and can throw an axe too. I don't, KGB. I don't, KGB, that's yeah, what I'm thinking. Yeah, KGB. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. In America. I believe yeah. it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm thinking. Those are her book club <laughs> meetings, huh? Huh? She goes to book club <laughs> meetings and sharpens her tools. Yeah, that's what she does. That's <laughs> funny because her family is like, all geniuses. Did you guys have a, 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 a particular strain you liked in your heyday? I liked weed. Just in general. Yeah. Just, that's it. That my, one they call weed? I like that one. It. My <laughs> favorite... Was anything given to me by a naked woman? <laughs> Even better. I feel, you. I feel you. What was your guys' favorite movie you guys did? Each of you guys, your favorite movie that we did together? Yeah, together. Uh, Up in Smoke. Up in Smoke. I mean, it's the first one. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. What do you like? What about your you? favorite? What's your favorite Chong movie? I I like them all. She liked them all. I liked them all. I liked. Uh, yeah, all of them. All of them had something. Up in Smoke had everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wildest place you've been on vacation? Pacoima. <laughs> Pacoima. <laughs> Wild, where is the wildest place you've been on vacation? You've been in a bunch of places. Pacoima. Pacoima. I'm not joking, man. I'm not, it was a vacation, like, you know, with palm trees and shit. Well, the, to me, Palau, you know, the island of Palau. That's, uh, it's off that's, Guam. Guam? Yeah, no, it's Guam. Up, 200 miles from Guam. Yeah. Okay. And it's off. It's... Uh, Skin capital, you know, you can, <laughs> oh, those giant shells that you see in Disney movies, you know. Clamshells. Yeah, yeah clamshells are there. I was out with a local one time with his boat, and I found a clamshell, and I struggled with it, got it up. You know, I had to swim underneath the water and got it up, put it in the boat, 
I went back down, and all of a sudden I hear a splash. <laughs> it was back my, in. my shell. <laughs> the boat captain, nah, I don't want that shit in my boat. <laughs> right. <laughs> he wow. threw it up. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> no, that was crazy. That's like, very, very native. I like Costa Rica. I, I used to go to Costa Rica a lot. That's real, it's real jungle, you know, where we used to go. So that was cool. <laughs> this is the final question. If you could see one guest on our show, who would it be? On your show? Mm-hmm. Who would you want on their show? Ray Don. <laughs> Ali Wong. Ali Wong. Ali Wong. Yeah, yeah. She would be good. There you go. Yeah. There you go. As long as we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to x-ray a few things. But, but, but it's the second part of the question. Yeah. You have to help us get your answer on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. sure. All right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No yeah. problem, yes, man. Awesome. We'll love Cassandra that. Peterson. We'll love to have her. Cassandra Peterson is Elvira. Okay, Elvira. Okay. She was part of the Groundlings. Oh, really? Too. She was one of the original Groundlings. And she was also a Las Vegas showgirl. We used to go out with Elvis. Ah, yeah. Be, she, Elvira was yeah. Somewhere he is now. Be in the yeah. Oh she, man, and she's yeah. a beautiful girl, man. Just, mm -hmm. Yeah, be, she, you, you would get a lot of stories out of her. That's cool. Well, man, we appreciate you guys' time. Thank you. Uh, it was an honor to be able to sit down and, and share some time for you. Man, that's a wrap. Burn one. Cheech and Chong. You can catch this on all the Smoke Productions and DraftKings Network. We'll see y'all next week. Peace out.